Well, I come from a very medium-sized town in Switzerland and called La Chaux-de-Fonds, and the abbreviation is La Chaux. And I had a wonderful cousin who uh, was involved with photography. He was a graphic designer, but uh, he had also his dark room and a lot of photo book. So <clears throat> one day he invited me to go in his dark room and and he was processing a white piece of paper and in a matter of few seconds, an image appeared. And he thought it was so magical for me, uh, for my 13 kind of age bracket. So from then on, I said, well, it looks like something I might want to do. In my hometown, we didn't have any photo school. Uh, and the only one available was in Lausanne. And my father heard to some other friend and it has a very bad school uh, with a bad reputation at the time. And I figured out, well, there's no other alternative to go in a Kunstgewerbeschule in, in Basel or in Zurich. So I decided to do an apprenticeship. Uh, in a company who does uh, postage stamp. So I spent four years uh, learning how to become a graphic designer and doing a lot of photography on the side. And from, from that on, after being graduated, I was sent to Milan to work for Pirelli, the Pirelli rubber company or the Pirelli Tire Company is well known for it. And <clears throat> it was just really, really a great experience to step out of my small town and, and be engaged as a graphic designer slash photographer in Milan. Uh, this, this, this sent me to cover some events like motocross, car racing, and from then on, I decided to come in the United States via Johannesburg. I didn't land immediately in Chicago. And I was in uh, <clears throat> Johannesburg for a year, bored out of my mind. Uh, there was full-fledged apartheid at the time, but I re reconnect with a wonderful design firm in Chicago by the name of Unimark International. And they flew me in, and from there, after a year and a half, I decided to start my own business and in 1980 opened my own photo studio. It's a photograph you want to own it. It's a photograph you want to put on your wall because it seemed to be very important and it also has to resonate some really uh, activity create questions, uh, disturb your mind. Uh, and, I, and I think it would be the quality that I'm looking for. It, it's not about home decor. It should be a photo that disturb your mind in some level. I would say it's more than a one, one photo assignment on one photograph. I, I hope I can answer with two, uh, two point of view. The first one I was hired by a great designer in New York by the name of Michael Beirut. And Michael Beirut had decided to send me an entire week to document the medical school of Yale. And, and it was an eye-opening uh, from being involved in dissections, which I also find out the body laying reasonably open on top of a metal table are ex-doctor who have gave their body to <clears throat> the university. Also, <clears throat> sorry, also uh, see doctor helping homeless. Uh, one night a week, uh, just a um, Nobel Peace Prize, uh, being, being involved with newborn 
or early born, they call it blue baby. I mean, also uh, open heart surgery. For this entire week, it was something that I could never be exposed, uh, some kind of setup of behind the scene of a hospital and university to teach medicine. And the other photo, then it was a very special event for me. I was one of 200 people who were invited to participate in a book called The Day in the Life of America in 1986. And we were spread out all over the country and we had to photograph from midnight to midnight on, uh, I think it was the 6th of May, if I'm not mistaken. And I connect with a fair amount of people at the time. I, I was directed to uh, the, the director of Chamber of Commerce who helped me to introduce me to a lot of other places such as the behind the scene on, uh, above on the casino when you when guard or security people look at customer or <clears throat> and also they send me to watch Siegfried and Roy levitating in a theater and at the end there was a, a woman who was getting all the projected on her and that woman her name is Opal Wells and she has seen the show 550 times. So I was really intrigued by this woman because she really represents America for me or the day in the life of America. And I connect with her and photograph her in, in a little tiny studio surrounded with dry bouquet of flowers, uh, with, with staff tigers. Uh, with photograph of Siegfried and Roy during their journey. And when I was photographing some uh, a madame in a brothels, uh, I got a phone call, then I can photograph Siegfried and Roy in their own compound. So here I am at 3 p.m. with a TV crew from NBC recording uh, Siegfried and Roy, they asked me when I got there, where would you like us to levitate? And as a joke, I told them, what about above the pool? And they said, well, go and get some food and we'll set up for you. And sure enough, they were levitating above water in a, in a local pool, in a home pool. And, and they set up the tree white tiger in the background and it was something really wonderful because they were both so friendly with me. Uh, even the crew had some technical problems, so they had to get another camera. So he went and changed his, uh, his outfit and we redid it again. We gave me the, the chance to really cover uh, well uh, the event. And it became this uh, selection of a Nikon calendar, uh, it became a spread in a book, so it became also a very well-known image.